Now I want to create something to protect the player from accidentally jumping outside the boundaries of our game. And just to show you what I mean, I'm going to go back to my Flappy Cam and play the game. And I'm immediately just going to do a whole bunch of jumping. And as you can see, there's nothing to stop me from jumping right out of the play area, seeing the background box for the fake that it is, eventually seeing the pipes and the inside faces not rendering, and basically break the game. So we don't want that to happen. To solve this problem, what I'm going to do is simply create some proximity triggers somewhere up here and somewhere down here well before the player gets to the boundaries of the game and can accidentally or deliberately go outside of our pipe area. This should depend not only on the total length of the pipe, but also your range of vertical pipe movement. So for instance, I've got a maximum of 10 right here. These pipes are quite a bit longer than 10 meters. So I'm going to put mine at 11 meters below the middle of the game. So 89 meters on Z and 111 meters on Z. So I'm going to go back to my legacy entities. Triggers, just as we did with score triggers. And I'm going to put this directly above Flappy, 500 on X, 500 on Y, and then I'm going to put it at 111 meters. Just so I can see this more easily, I'm going to hide my background box temporarily. And I'm going to make this skinny and plenty wide. Even though I know that Flappy isn't moving in either direction, I definitely want to make it thin. Remember that it's not a mesh, so I can't use my scale. I've got to come down here to my dim X, Y, and Z. I'm going to make mine a meter thick. And I'm going to give it a name. Just call it Death Trigger Top. And I'm going to make a copy of it. And this one, I'm, of course, I'm going to name Death Trigger Bottom. And all I'm going to do is bring that down to 89 meters, like this. And if you remember back to when we use these for score triggers, we have to tell it which entities it can sense. And by default, it only senses the first person shooter player, which doesn't do us any good at all. So we need to turn off only player, and we need to put the name of our Flappy Boy entity here. And just to avoid any potential problems, I'm just going to actually select this, copy it to the clipboard, and then paste it in here. So there's no chance that I can get it wrong. Now that we have them in position, we actually need to create a flow graph to react to the player touching them. There's one other thing that you might consider here, which is also add some kind of visible boundary, because potentially the player could get upset that they are dying and they don't have any kind of warning. So you might just take a and use a brush entity and grab one of the fences or something like that, which I've done in the sample level that I've given to you, something like that. I'm going to leave that up to you and I'm going to go select these two proximity triggers and go to my main flow graph, go to a blank section here. Right click and add them as entity nodes. And of course, on the enter event for either one of them, all I'm going to do is set my boo is dead game token to true. So I need a game token set. And I need to get both of these outputs into that one input. So again, that is my logic any, which I could have inserted manually, or I can do it after the fact now. To put a comment box around this. Let's test it out. And I jumped too far. I hit that boundary and I immediately died. This time I'll just let myself fall. And you see the same thing happened. And again, you may want to adjust the precise position of your proximity triggers depending on your range of vertical pipe movement. Now that we have our main game mechanics in place, we can start to add some fun enhancements to it that aren't necessary for gameplay, but make it a more fun experience. Although what we'd probably want to do to maximize the addictive factor of the game is to make it very easy and quick to restart after death. Just to introduce some more concepts, I'm going to create a kind of a fun ending with our game over raft here. So we have this thing that I've kind of given a wooden texture to 
and I have it floating above the water. However, our terrain is still lurking here, and it's actually above this water. You might have forgotten because we've had it hidden for so long. I'm going to come back to the perspective viewports display menu, turn the terrain on, and you'll see that it's sitting there at 32 meters, which is the default height. So at this point, I actually want to push this terrain down out of the way. We can push it way, way down. For now, I'm just going to bring it down to zero. And since I've already moved the water up to 30 meters, that will give me a plenty of space to bring my camera down here to kind of a dramatic position. I'm gonna make this fall into the water and sort of bob like a raft. And then what I'm gonna do is sink the camera down beneath the water while turning it to look up at the game over box still bobbing in the water. Again, this is just one creative idea to illustrate some flow graph and some other concepts. You can take these concepts and then apply them to your own creative ending. The first thing is I need to make sure that my raft has mass and we've assigned it a mass of 200. To see it actually fall, I need to turn off resting. And I'm going to do that now and actually just preview this without having to go through gameplay, simply by turning on physics, which again is control P, and you'll immediately see it fall and bob in the water. I'm not super crazy about the way this feels. It feels too light to me. It doesn't feel substantial. So I'm simply going to increase the mass to 500 kilograms. I'm going to go into full screen and try control P again. And now I look kind of like the way it splashes there. I'm going to move my camera down and do that again, control P. And now it starts to feel like kind of a heavy raft and it sits there and bobs in the water. So I'm pretty happy with that. I could make it fall from a larger height. I'm not sure. It depends on timing. The next thing I want to do is deal with my camera that's going to see this. We're already switching to the game over camera in our game over flow graph right here. And just to see what it sees, I'm going to go ahead and make it live temporarily. And I'm going to make sure that this is a 16 by 9 window and then look at it from this perspective. So what I want to do is simply move this camera down to a more dramatic position sort of right above the water. And what I'm thinking is to move this thing up so that when the camera is initially here it only sees water and it's a surprise when this thing falls into the camera's view. I'm going to select my camera over here in my level explorer and I'm simply going to move it down just by dragging on this number. I know my water's at 30 meters and I'm just going to come to a little bit above it and maybe rotate my camera so that it looks down at the water a bit more. And then what I'm going to do is select my game over raft and actually move that up until it disappears just out of sight like that. And now I'm going to go back into full screen, hit control P to turn on physics and watch it fall. And now I feel like I have a pretty good view of the game over. The only other thing I could do is maybe move the camera a bit closer, but I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, now that we have that done, let's animate the camera. I'm going to make some space here. Before I forget that, I also need to turn the resting property back on for my game over raft. Otherwise, it's going to fall immediately on the start of the game. So I need to keep that on, and I need to dynamically turn this off just at the right moment when my camera is activated over here. So in order to do that, I need something called property set. And this is part of the entity folder. I've got my raft selected. I'm going to assign that as my entity. I'm going to go ahead and do that as soon as I die. I'll worry about the timing later. It's possible that I may want to insert some kind of delay. The property that I want to set is a physics property. And it's called B resting. And I want to set its value to false. So that means as soon as I die, this raft is going to start falling down towards the water. And right now I have a one second delay before I even switch to that camera. So it's possible I may want to move that raft up higher and give it farther to fall. So before we do any fancy camera animation, let's just check that much and make sure it's working. I'm going to die. One second delay, and you can see it's too late. The game over raft has already fallen. So, of course, the solution here, go back to my default camera here, is simply to move this up. And I really have no idea how much. I'll try 38 meters. I'm just guessing. Test again. Die. One second. And there I see a pretty good splash there. 
So you could fine tune this if you like. I'm going to leave it that way for now. The next thing I want to do is wait a couple seconds so I can see the game over floating there. And I'm thinking, ah, it's over. Okay, I died. Fine. And although this would wear thin after a couple times, just again to illustrate some flow graph stuff, I'm going to go ahead and sync the camera and simultaneously rotate it to look upwards. I'm going to make sure I have my game over camera selected. And I'm simply going to use my Move Entity 2 node, and that's going to be my camera. I'm going to sync it kind of slowly, we'll say over an 8 second period. So I'm going to go ahead and link it to the start here, insert my delay, and in my case I'll try 4 seconds of watching the raft bob there. The next thing is I have to give it a destination. Well, what I'm going to do is get the destination of the camera now, and then just subtract a value on the z-axis. So I need a get pause. And that's going to be my camera. And then I need to subtract. So that's going to be my friend subvec3, sub for subtract. And I'm simply going to subtract, I don't know, we'll try 15 meters on the z-axis. And that's going to become my destination. And then, of course, I need to trigger the get. And I'm going to do that after my game over camera is activated. Let's test this. And there's my syncing. So that would certainly be enough, but just to add one more little trick to it, I'm also going to rotate the camera at the same time. Since I created the camera from a view and I wasn't so scrupulous about checking my rotation of my default camera, I ended up with a funny rotation that's built into here, and that's going to create problems. So I'm going to make sure this thing is absolutely parallel to my game over raft. I'm going to copy my Z position here, and I'm going to raise my camera up so it's looking at the game over. And to figure out which axis to rotate it around, I'm just going to drag on these. You can see that one gives me a Dutch angle, which I don't want. This one pans to one side, which I don't want. So that means it's the X axis. And if I look here, I don't want to look down. I want to look up, which means I got to rotate this in a positive direction. I need to grab my game over camera again. So I want to use the rotate entity two node. Make sure you don't mix that up with rotate entity, which spins something constantly. Rotate entity two as a start input so that I can trigger it. I'm going to assign my game over camera. I'm going to try spinning it 45 degrees upward on the X axis. I'm going to start that movement at the same time I start my downward movement. I want to do this over a period of time, not at a particular speed. I'm going to do this a little faster than I'm actually syncing the camera, so I try and make sure that I can always see the game over raft. And this is the tricky part, and that's the coordinate system. I don't want to rotate about a parent entity. I want to rotate about the local coordinate system. So I rotate about the pivot, the center of my whole game over raft. Let's give it a test. There's my splashdown, and then my delay, sync, and rotate. And I'm pretty happy with that.